Let's talk uh, markets now with Gabriela uh, Santos. She is global market strategist at J.P. Morgan uh, Asset Management, and just barely came back uh, and decided to work. I would say. <laughs> If you, she had some personal things happening that uh, I would All not. Good. Like a little small thing, a wedding, a wedding a honeymoon, a, a, you know, whatever. An Amalfi Coast type situation. Yeah. Thanks for being here. You're uh, welcome. Are you, are, you, are you happy you're here? Uh, Super excited. Really? Okay. Lots to talk about. Yeah, lots lots happened while I was gone. So. Right. Ignore the ADP report. You, you say it's, it's crappy uh, in, in terms of prediction, but you still say things are really, uh, you look at other things and it's a resilient job market anyway. Ignore it just as a predictor of the jobs report. It has okay. a terrible track record. They don't really track each other at all. But really, if you look at the mosaic of the jobs data you got yesterday, challenger layoffs coming down, the quits rate moving higher, continuing claims staying very low, services, ISM employment index ticking up. The whole mosaic does point a picture of a still pretty resilient jobs market. It is gradually slowing, but it's very gradual. So for today, we look at 260,000 new jobs added. That's our forecast. Tick lower in the unemployment rate to 3.6% and still 0.3% month over month wage growth. So still too high for the Fed, especially that month over month wage growth figure. And hence makes sense that expectations are high for a hike in July now. But it, it, you actually thought that the, the stock market could have taken it positively because it's, it's clear eventually things are going to slow. And, and it's kind of good that the economy is hanging in there and that the jobs market is hanging in there, isn't it? You, you can look at that either of two ways. Absolutely. It, it could be a good thing. And we were in that sweet spot where we yeah. were taking the good data as a good thing. But then we had the Fed meeting and now we're expecting um, a f further hikes by the Fed. So really, I think the market is concerned about the possibility of a policy error now that the data being too strong means too many hikes, overdoing it, and an eventual slowdown. Not this year. The odds have come down over the past three months, but perhaps next year. You, th you think the wages, though, that's going to be the key component for the Fed. If 0.3% month over month is too hot, what would not be? 0.1%, 0.2%, or does it have to be flat? No. So I think ideally for them, um, a level of wage growth consistent with 2% inflation is something closer to 3.5%. So I think month over month figures of 0 0.2, 0 0.3 is what they're looking for. Over the past 12 months, we've been seeing 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So there has been a slowdown, but it's still a bit too hot for their liking, given the tie to core services ex shelter inflation. We don't think it's actually wages that's driving that figure. A lot of it is actually auto insurance, which is much more about rates than it is wages. But their calculation seems to be very focused on wages. Not many people uh, thought we'd be at wherever we are in the S&P. I uh, saw an article on, on one guy who said 4,700, Tom Lee. Now he's at 4,800. You think we stay where we are, tread water? You think we go higher? Are we uh, out? Valuation's too high right now? So it does seem to us that we've had quite a run in multiple expansion, right? 16%. That's been behind almost the entire run we've seen this year right. in the stock market. So there's already quite a lot of enthusiasm about artificial intelligence, cost cutting at tech firms, and a potential soft landing. So you could get some disappointment ahead and you could see a pullback. And here we're thinking about the second quarter earnings season. Expectations have not come down as much as normal. So we're in a setup where we could be actually disappointed by earnings and that could be a trigger for a pullback. But just making it clear, we do think the bear market is over. We started a new bull market, and we're talking about a more normal pullback, which we could use to add exposure to quality companies, both on the growth side and the value side.